So overall, is this legislation an improvement over the Consumer Protection Act 2002? Yes, it is. There are improvements here. Will this make Ontario the gold standard of consumer protection again amongst all the jurisdictions out there? I think there is more work, much more work required to bring us to that standard. Why? Well, there's many reasons, but one, we lack enforcement. This legislation does change laws to better protect consumers, but ultimately consumers will have to seek justice in court against companies with massive wealth and teams of lawyers. Consumers will be better armed, but in my opinion, they remain outgunned. Furthermore, consumers face industry-wide issues that this legislation cannot fix, and these powerful industries that may compete amongst themselves still band together to form powerful and well-funded associations that lobby governments and attempt to sway public opinion through PR campaigns. But what do consumers have? There are consumer protections organizations and advocates out there, but they, as I mentioned, are on the brink of extinction and operate with little to no funding. They churn out well thought out reports with solutions, but ultimately they are shouting into the winds of a hurricane that is slowly sweeping them away. As I said, there is more work to be done, but we cannot do that work alone. Consumers need help. They need a strong ally to stand up against these industries. On December 8th, 2020, under the 42nd Parliament of Ontario, I tabled the Ontario Consumer Watchdog Act, legislation for the government to develop and implement a plan to establish an independent consumer watchdog organization that is responsible for overseeing consumer protection matters in Ontario. On March 8, 2021, I tabled second reading of the Act, and earlier this year, we proudly tabled a strengthened version. The Ontario Consumer Watchdog an independent organization that would oversee all consumer protection matters in Ontario. At present, it can be difficult to exercise consumer protection rights. Depending on the nature of the complaint, there could be a number of different places, and frequently the only avenue is to pursue the matter legally, an option that is not available to many consumers and is cost prohibitive. The consumer watchdog would be able to release public reports similar to the Auditor General or the Ombudsman of Ontario, and to level fines, levy fines or other penalties against businesses that have been found to have not acted in accordance with the consumer protection legislation. Daniel Sai, a consumer advocate, had this to say about the bill. Quote, Ontario families continue to struggle against escalating grocery prices and huge food bills to feed themselves, while the big five grocery chains, Loblaws, Sobeys, Metro, Costco, and Walmart dominate with 80% market share and reap huge profits they put back into their executives' pockets. While Loblaw's CEO gets a million dollar raise, Canadians need a break from price gouging and a government to champion their concerns. An Ontario consumer watchdog is what this province sorely needs to fight food inflation and price gouging and to protect consumers. If Ontario implements the MPP from Humber River Black Creek's consumer watchdog bill, Ontario will be the undisputed leader in protecting consumers in Canada." End quote. And Don Mercer, former president of the Consumers Council of Canada, issued the following statement, quote, Consumers Council of Canada applauds this bill being tabled for the consideration of Ontario legislators. It's especially timely to engage with proposals for improving consumer protection in Ontario. Under current economic pressures, consumers are increasingly sensitive about whether the marketplace is fair and that public policy works for rather than against them. They want their legitimate concerns to be heard and responded to promptly by business and government. They are ready for innovative ideas that will better support the legitimate interest in meeting basic needs, staying safe and healthy, exercise informed choice, finding redress and protecting their privacy in our sophisticated economy, whole of government approaches to deliver consumer well-being will be critical to economic success." End quote. The reaction from the government, however, when the bill was tabled, was to shoot down the bill for a watchdog. Unfortunately, this, the disdain of the idea was apparent in the words of the minister of the time, referring to the establishment of a consumer watchdog as, quote, implementing more red tape and more blockers, end quote. He said that there is currently an abundance of compliance and enforcement actions that currently exist and even directed people to call the Consumer Protection Ontario. This is simply untrue. I will mention that press conference again when the Premier angrily blasted a, a retailer for gouging on Lysol wipes and urging the public to report gouging 
to the consumer hotline. And so what happened? At that time, again, there were 30,000 complaints, but not a single fine laid. The minister went on to further say at the time, quote, my ministry has oversight of 11 administrative authorities and one statutory corporation that are responsible for delivering critical programs and services, including ensuring a delegated consumer protection and public safety laws are applied and enforced. They include very flexible ways to respond to a wide array, a range of emerging issues, end quote. Most consumer protection advocates state that these delegated administrative authorities are not working. They are generally loaded with the players they seek to regulate. At best, they seek not to rock the boat, and at worst, these authorities function as though they were fully captured. This brings me to the last point, which is a concern I've always had with this government. They rely too heavily, if not solely, on industry to write their policies. Speaker, industries cannot regulate themselves. When governments consult businesses on how to better protect consumers from unfair practices, they're essentially asking the fox, on how to better construct chicken wire. And why would they help anyway? When consulted, they scream poor to threaten or leave the market while posting profits and comforting their shareholders. Speaker, take for example the auto insurance industry. Statistics show that Ontarians are some of the safest drivers in the country, yet we continue to pay the highest auto insurance rates on earth. Families are paying sky-high auto insurance premiums while big insurance companies make record profits. GTA drivers with clean records continue to be gouged by this unfair practice, which makes life unaffordable in places like Brampton, Scarborough, and Vaughan. Drivers need relief. Speaker, when the NDB introduced a bill to end postal code discrimination and price gouging, the government blocked the bill only to introduce lackluster measures that failed to address postal code discrimination. However, in 2022, the bill was voted on unanimously, but the government did not pass it into law. Ontarians are already living paycheck to paycheck, especially in the face of skyrocketing costs of living and an affordability crisis. We need to take action against price gouging and postal code discrimination that is putting more financial burden on hardworking Ontarians and only benefiting big corporations. Take it from a resident named Yavuz, who wrote to my office saying the following, quote, coming from a working class background, every dollar counts for me and my family, including insurance rates. Unfortunately, the current policies and regulations on auto insurance creates an accessibility and class barrier to automotive transportation, which has led me to forego owning a car as the associate, associated insurance rates are cost prohibitive. Honest, law-abiding citizens are discriminated by virtue of their geographical and financial backgrounds due to postal code discrimination without accounting for individuals' factors. Insurance quality... Insurance equality means that people can travel more and explore more economic opportunities. If insurance costs were less cost prohibitive, I would also have more of an opportunity to work in different localities. So, you've heard it from consumer protection advocates, in particular those in a particular area that are frustrated because they feel that this bill is not going to address their issue. You've heard from experts and associations about what they think the gold standard should look like and what should be on what should be focused on you've heard from everyday residents and so speaker we are debating a bill that has many positive improvements for consumer protection it repeals a bill from 2002 the act from 2002 with a series of improvements but here on this side of the house, we're looking for the gold standard. Are there improvements? There are. I've listed many. I've been very open about how it's positive, and I do believe in a number of situations it's going to continue. Uh, it, it will help consumers. But what the issue continues to be is that to fix problems, consumers will have to go through the court systems. And while this may equip them with better laws for their lawyers, they're going to have to shell out money in a lot of cases to fight against Goliath. That is, old, that is going to continue to be a challenge. 